there are many, many ways that you can connect with spirit, but one of my favorites is through art. And that's because it's a super direct connection. It bypasses that thinking mental mind that uses words. And so sometimes we can get some super interesting, just kind of understandings of the universe through artwork. Um, so if you don't know me yet, my name is Ona Christie. I'm a visionary artist, and I want to share with you today a piece of uh, a watercolor painting that I recently did that has, I've been doing inquiries around it, okay? And all these messages are coming through. It gets really metaphysical. So if you enjoy the, the kind of metaphysical stuff about the workings of the universe, join me and I'll tell you about this painting. I'll also reveal a little bit of my process for understanding the messages of a painting, as well as I'll tell you about an upcoming opportunity where you can tap into your own ability to uh, learn more about spirit, about yourself, and about the universe through art. And, uh, just a little bit of prehistory to the painting. It, uh, it's been about two years in the works. I did the drawing for it a couple years ago as part of a series about the all-seeing eye. And you can see this eye shape in the middle. Um, so the all-seeing eye is really kind of about the concept of awareness and being aware of what's going on around you. And so it wasn't until just a week or two ago, and I'm recording this in mid-October, that I picked this back up again and was just prompted to, to actually paint it out and finish it. And I do find that happens if you are um, an artist and tend to just kind of get images channeling through, be aware that sometimes they'll come in and they'll be sort of, um, a, well, what I call visionary is, kind of not predicting the future, but speaking to events, maybe in a different timeline than what you're in right now or a different time frame, right? And sometimes that's why when pieces disappear for a while, they will resurface. And we see that also happening with famous artists sometimes that they might not be very well known in their own lifetime, but then maybe a few generations later, suddenly they become really popular. It's because their art was so, you know, not even speaking to their own age, it was speaking to a, a different age. Um, and so sometimes this will happen because it's your, you know, whatever your higher self at the moment is, understands that the future, whether it's your own self or the future collective, will be needing these messages. And that's, it's just like almost putting um, information into a time capsule through the art. Okay, so uh, um, one of the ways that I, I work with art is in, in conjunction with journaling, okay? And I work with the Akashic Records through my journal. And so sometimes I'll start with an image like this because the image comes through very pure, right? Without the words. And so it's, it's like it, so much as can be distilled into an image, that phrase, you know, we all know the phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, what it really is. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on why this is important in just a bit. But before I go into this painting, I want to show you a drawing that came up just recently in one of my soul visioning sessions with a client. So this individual gave me permission to share this a symbol that came forward. When I do an energy session with somebody anymore, I am including a drawing with it. A lot of times that'll be the drawing of maybe there uh, might be an angel or a, an animal spirit or something that comes through for them. But sometimes it's symbolic, right? A symbol. And in this case, it was this very interesting symbol here. When I went and did some inquiries around it, and, and immediately when I when the symbol came through, the words tesseracted caduceus, I was given to understand that this is a tesseracted caduceus. Well, we all know, you know, that the caduceus is that the healing symbol, right, with the wand and the snakes and the wings um, that symbolizes healing. A tesseract is like, it's like a four-dimensional cube, a cube in four dimensions that's been expanded. And, but I didn't know what a tesseracted caduceus was or what quite was meant by that. So I went and did some inquiries around that. And I was told 
that a tesseract is an expanded expression of mind or an expansion of mind. And so they told me that, uh, and they, by they, I mean my ascension guides, which ultimately is kind of like the higher self, right? Um, it's expressed in secret geometry through this tesseract shape, the expanded cube, but that tesseration thing that happens is not just for geometry it can happen for all forms right because every single form has geometry right every shape every uh, being right and all of those can be subjected to this fourth dimensional experience of expansion right they also told me that a time warp is a tesseract in time so that was sort of an interesting thing just a little snippet um okay so then i asked well, what happens, you know, what happens to the mind when it goes through a tesseration? It said that when the mind goes through a, a, this fourth dimensional expansion experience, a tesseration, which is something that I believe that we're all going through right now, right? It said it gets fragmented and then it must come together as a unified whole. But when it comes back together, it happens in an entirely different way. So they told me just as you can combine carbon atoms in different ways to make completely different substances. So this is what happens to our minds. This is why, this is one reason why the ascension process can be kind of disorienting and confusing. It's because our minds are literally being recombined, right? Um, and by the way, this happens with songbirds sometimes um, when they, they have to, um, between between migrations because their brains can only hold so much and they the scientists have done research that a songbird will it's like their mind sort of gets broken down and recombined <laughs> for the breeding season for the different things that they have to do and it's just in order to be able to process the information so what i take from that is and, and this is just coming in right now uh, with the help of the spirit animal the songbird right um the chickadees in particular is that in this process that we're all in of this fourth dimensional expansion, it's it's not only a you know taking apart and recombining, but also there's information that's no longer needed that's just getting dropped, you know, just getting clearing. It's just sort of like when you're you're clearing your hard drive or something, right? So that's part of what does happen here and. So that's why, if you, I mean, if your memory isn't quite the same, there's certain memories that we actually don't need anymore once we've we've had that lesson. Um, so, but they, the message goes on to say that in reality there really isn't a fragmentation, and this gets a little complex. So bear with me, um, because they say everything's happening at once in reality, right? In in divine reality. But when you look at it from a 3D perspective, it looks like portions are fragmented or lost because not all of it can be seen from any given point when you're in the 3D world, right? And they say, this is why you can be whole and yet appear to be broken. So what I'm taking from this beautiful message is, you know, you're not broken. You've never been broken, right? It's just that you're going through this process, okay? So if you feel like there's something wrong with you, don't. Okay, this is this is one of the biggest things that keeps us in the matrix is this feeling of there's something wrong with me, which leads to these feelings of shame and guilt that hold us down in there. Okay, so just know that whatever's happened, you know, stories that have happened in your life, it's part of this process of recombining and bringing us back. Okay, and so, um, you know, this, this, what we do, the clearings and especially work with forgiveness helps to cleanse that all so that we can <laughs> um, kind of move through this process. You know what, I'm gonna show you another precursor drawing to, and this was, uh, this person had two sessions with me uh, a week apart. And this is very recently as I was starting to do the painting. And the second one that came through is this kind of um, the Star of David sort of image. And I thought it was interesting because it was like rounded. We usually see it very straight sides. And so I went and inquired about this one too. And I was told that this, this even though it's in two dimensions, it represents the, the Merkaba, which is this vehicle, right, for ascension. And it says the Merkaba, as it enters the material plane, softens. 
it becomes elastic and forgiving and it expands and makes room for synthesis okay so the merkaba is something that um, exists really on the spiritual plane but it interacts and, and becomes the material and it's telling me it interacts with the void and um, this is, can be understood as representing the void here this this thing in the middle um, the merkaba interacts with the void it says it dances with the void it plays with it it invokes it it teases it abates it <laughs> and ultimately the merkaba becomes the material in attempt to get the void to react but then my client had a really interesting observation and this person um to this person it appears like the merkaba is actually protecting the void so i think there's that going on as well and just be aware that just because i'm i'm coming out with these interpretations you may get your own downloads on these images or other images um and so trust what's coming through if you're getting suddenly oh i get a hit on that i get a hit on that i'd love to see it in the comments below okay because i think there's so many layers of understanding of these images that come through from spirit and when we collectively work together to understand them it's great okay so then i asked what's the source of the merkaba and it said the void and then the question is my next question was how did the merkaba ever separate itself or get born from the void and the answer was interesting the merkaba has never been separate from the void nothing is separate from the void the void is the mother of all void is actually a misnomer as it implies empty but the emptiness of the void contains all there is so this is like this great womb right and you're probably familiar with this concept but from void to incarnation is simply a matter of focus i'm going to go back to the painting here okay so from void and this you can see that void in the middle there too to incarnation being you know being being here present right is just a matter of focus to lose all focus that's the void okay so that's not necessarily a bad thing right it's total awareness um but it means also that the void, you, you lose yourself, right? If you're so completely aware of everything, and, and that's the state of like the mother God, right? Um, mother, father God, because it encompasses all, right? But it's so, it's completely, completely unfocused because it is so totally, totally aware. But as soon as you begin to focus within the void, that is incarnation, as what you focus on comes into being and remember that focused vision is the masculine vision diffuse awareness is the feminine vision so this is talking about the act of creation okay so it's a matter of the focus right the infinite energy of the void shifting through focus in such a way as to break the total pattern of complete rest and peace and this is why stillness brings you closer to the void and you get still in yourself Okay, but as you accelerate towards infinity, you also approach stillness. So creation is therefore circular or cyclical in nature. Now, I warned you, this would get very, very metaphysical. And I think this is a concept that we can probably sit with for a lifetime and, and still be getting revelations. So I'm just going to go on. But if you have comments or, you know, hits or downloads about any of this, again, just put them in the comments. We'd love to see those. Um, okay, so... So asking a little bit more deeply into the painting itself, okay? And what I'm kind of seeing is this central figure here. And it's almost like there was a lot of kind of, um, you know, these spiral things that showed up in that first drawing. If you follow it, this is probably easier to see right here. Um, but I'm also seeing that in the central figure and that it's kind of, it looks like it's expanding from the center. Also, there's this downwards triangle that is very prominent that usually, you know, is associated with the feminine or the divine feminine, um, as well as there's all these circles that are intersecting. This is, um, if you're familiar with the Vesica Pisces, I did a video on that a few months back. I can link that here. And these are kind of like the basis of the flower of life kind of symbol too going on. So just there's so much sacred geometry in here. It, it gets a little overwhelming, but then we are in sort of overwhelming times. Okay, so they're saying that everything that's applied to the Tesseract drawing uh, kind of applies here too. It's an expansion of the ether. And 
the description is that this is a pan-dimensional understanding of the universe. So it's talking about many, many different dimensions and being in many dimensions at once. Okay, so there, the message is that this, the central eye, the center point, represents the evolved being and one that centers itself in stillness and thus is able to access multiple levels and directions of time and space. So this illustrates a being in full awareness. This is the Christ self. And interesting that they really equated it to coming into stillness, spending time in that void. I think this is really, really key for anyone going through this ascension is the importance of really coming to stillness, right? Quieting the mind. Of course, you know, the, the Vedic masters and so forth have known this for centuries and centuries. And, and you know, master, spiritual masters all over the world coming to stillness stilling the mind but I think right now in this world it's it, it extremely important um, in my other business I just wrote an article I'm a writer as well just wrote an article um, <laughs> that one of the pieces of research I had to do was that people now the current estimate is that we're exposed to like 6,000 advertising messages a day it's crazy. It's all this stuff going on, right? All this energy. And to be able to come into stillness now, really hand it to yourself. If you're practicing, if you're on this awareness and awakening path in the midst of all that's going on in the century right now, you already have attained a degree of spiritual mastery that really is pretty ninja, right? To be able to, you know, <laughs> be aware of yourself as, as an evolved being. Um, so, so give yourself some credit for the mastery that you already have attained, okay? So going forward here, this here represents the point of emergence, it's very center. And another thing about the drawing that we looked at earlier, kind of pop that up again, is that you can look at this and see the, um, see the the four directions and i also want to thank another viewer for mentioning that or somebody who connected with me through through youtube for pointing this out that this you know this is really the four dimensions like it's like the medicine wheel um and another friend pointed out that these really reminded her of the dna strands right so there's an expansion in dna happening um but here's this point which can also you know, as well as the center, it can be seen as the point of emergence, and we can see the arrows going in all directions, expanding outwards. Um, so they're calling it the point of emergence, also an epiphany or a revelation, right? So that's an expansion of the mind, right? So this is the Christ self blossoming forward, bursting forth from the center point of stillness and awareness. So through focusing on stillness, there we are opening, and this talks about the cycles, right? So this is the eternal nature of the life force energy permeating the material world, right? It bursts into being. The life force interacts with the void, bursts into being, and comes forward as the Christ self, playing its way through it, through the material world. Life as vibration as an, and as, as expansion. So we can see it as the moment of conception, the moment of realization, right? So we have physical connection when a baby is conceived. We also have this, you know, this mental uh, realization, right? Which is like a, a spiritual birth. And also the eternal expressing itself through the finite, that spirit coming through into the material world to express itself. This is what we all are. We are all spirit expressing itself through the material. It's a miracle, really. <laughs> and I use that miracle to mean that it's, I don't mean that it's outside of spiritual law or universal law. The miracle is just what we don't understand. It is, it is so vast that we can't even comprehend it. But we are living miracles, all of us. And um, so this here, this image represents at once the shattering of the self, right, the, the ego self, 
and the complete awareness. And because what it's saying is like when we kind of burst into being, when spirit comes into the material world, it's sort of like a prism, right? You've got this beautiful, pure white light that comes in. And then it through coming into the material world, it just kind of shatters it. So you get all these almost like rainbow hues, right? And this is why we see God everywhere in the material world. It's because each each creature, each being, each thing is a reflection of God or is an aspect or a facet of God, right? Including ourselves. But then each one can reflect the whole of eternity. Um, okay, so this is kind of represents that shattering of self that happens, but it also represents the complete awareness of self as a sovereign being, right? As whole and as fully united with all that is. Okay, so each of us as a separate facet of God is of, in and of ourselves, a whole being, meaning that we have contained the entire universe. We contain God within us, okay? Um, and this is also just symbolized in this one image. So <laughs> get to that again. Um, so it's a complete awareness of self as sovereign, as whole, as fully united with all that is. It is therefore also forgiveness, humor, and love. Um, going on to say it's the cycles of life, ever returning and rippling in myriad variations and repetitions and evolutions of beauty. Every iteration, a reflection of light, of the infinity of God's love. Okay, so all this meaning and probably lots and lots more. You could probably spend a lot more time with this and get lots more meanings. One of the things that I found was there's a heart shape in here, right? So it's this divine love that's coming through and permeating all of it, right? And what it's saying is like everything that's happening, everything, even the shattering, even the breaking, right? It's all, can, you know, comes back to love there's there's no time where love isn't present it just you know it can be hard sometimes you know seeing from when we see things from one tiny little perspective if we're standing right here at this point and we can only see from that point can't see the wholeness of it um it, sometimes it can be you know we can get kind of way deep in the shadows right but in the totality of all all is this beauty right and encased in divine love Okay, so finally, I asked one more question. It's like, how can you use an image like this for healing? And for this particular image, they told me to follow the spirals. Um, they said, don't try to understand because I'll, as soon as they said that, my mind was like, but, but, but what? <laughs> and they were like, don't try to understand. You know, just trust that the understanding will come in time. They said, you'll see that within the apparent circles, there are spirals. And I know that there are a couple little spiral spirally things in here and uh, but I think they were also talking about these circles that within the circles there was some sort of spiral motion um, and they said to find the rhythm and that you when you start working with this and actually they said to breathe to it find the rhythm in it start breathing to it and actually moving your body to it that it will reset your system to align with the original clock of the universe and the universal heart. And I suspect there's more inquiries to be done around that. What is this original clock of the universe, this universal heart? Okay, so thank you for, for, for bearing with me. I know this was a lot, um, but I, personally I find it pretty exciting. Um, and if you too find it exciting, like just really having fun with this, and if, whether or not you are already doing art, I believe everybody can bring through, you know, messages from the divine, from the beyond, through the medium of art, okay? Whether it's watercolor or pen and ink or uh, acrylic paint or just plain old pencil or marker or crayon, it doesn't matter. Um, everybody's got it within them, right? And from the smallest child to the oldest person. And uh, so, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I um, gave my very first visionary art workshop. It was really fun. There were <laughs> maybe a dozen or so people there. And I just held space for each person to bring forth, um, you know, what spirit wanted to show them. And it was really fun. I, I'm going to try to post a couple more 
um, of their their paintings coming up here. But I just want to invite you. I um, have been just being called to do this again to offer this again. So if you didn't get to make it, I'm going to try to have it at a different time this time. And um, it's because there are some people that couldn't make it because it was so late for them. Um, so I'll just leave that link below. And if you feel inspired to join us, that would be awesome. And so, yeah, Matt, if you've enjoyed this, uh, give the video a big thumbs up. I mean, by the way, I'm going to have the print, the link to the, the, the print of this painting as well. Um, in case it calls to you, you can get yourself a copy. Um, or I'll have the original for sale as well. Okay, so thanks again. Again, would love to see your comments, and I'll catch you again soon.